All right, first steps first. We're gonna talk about how to be a successful real estate bird dog. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Mitch Steven, and I've bought thousands of houses. Early on in my career, I started out just like everyone else, broke and ambitious and relatively naive. So I'm going to talk to you about how to start off with nothing from the very beginning on a shoestring budget and how to be a successful bird dog, because that's where most of us started. In this episode, we're going to talk about door knocking, driving for dollars, and how to network with realtors. Last but not least, we're going to talk about bandit signs. And that's one of my favorites because I launched my whole career. I was a bandit sign fool and I made a fortune with bandit signs. So let's start out with door knocking. It's relatively simple. You drive through neighborhoods, you park your car, you get out, you start walking, and you knock on one door after the other. If you do that enough times, you'll find a house. When you're door knocking, you can hit about 100 to 200 houses in an evening. Now, it depends on how many people stop to talk to you, how many houses don't answer the door, but suffice to say, I'd rather talk to a lot of people and just do 100 houses than to talk to nobody and do 200. Here's the deal. You have to put up the numbers and do not avoid rundown or downtrodden houses. People are more likely to want to sell if the house is in some kind of depressed state and you can make more money from distressed houses than you can pretty houses in general. While you're door knocking, go ahead and have some flyers so that you can leave something on the doorknob when someone doesn't answer. Leave door hanger or a flyer or a card, leave something. You've already taken the time to get there. You've already spent all the energy. Don't just knock on the door and leave. If no one answers, leave something. Always put yourself in the middle of the road so that you have a chance to get hit by the money truck. Next, we wanna talk about driving for dollars. I love this. It's easy. It's actually kind of interesting because you get to cover a lot of ground. Driving for dollars is pretty much just what it sounds like. You get in your car and you start driving around town. You're looking for distressed or vacant properties, and you'll get pretty good at recognizing them. While you're doing that, do yourself a favor. Call on every for sale sign that's out there just to see with your eyes what the house looks like and to hear with your ears the price they're asking. If you do that enough times, you'll start to become an expert in values. And when you're an expert in values, when you hear a low price, you'll know immediately and you'll know to gravitate towards that price and to move quickly. Now, driving for dollars, you can do yourself or you can have someone else do it. Either way, you can pin about 100 properties in an eight hour day. Now, when I'm paying someone to drive for me, I pay them about $100 to $120 for the day and I give them 20 bucks for gas. You can also use some driving apps where you can actually see your car going down the road in the map and you can pin certain properties and certain apps like the one I'm about to tell you will actually let you take a picture, a selfie with the house in the background and it will send out a postcard to the taxpayer of record for about $1 right now and the picture will have you in the front and their house in the back and you can write whatever you want to say on the front of the card. So if you're interested in that kind of app, which I think you should be, go to 1000houses.com forward slash machine and read all about this amazing app. I like the app and I have it on my phone because sometimes I'm just out messing around and I see this vacant house and I know I should send that vacant house a letter, but I'm really not going to slow down to write down the address and I'm probably not going to go buy an envelope and I'm probably not going to write the letter because I'm just too busy. But when I have that app, I just go take a picture, I hit send and it's done. They bill my credit card a dollar and that postcard is being delivered to that vacant house owner right now. So check it out. 1000houses.com machine. Over the years, I've made a lot of money networking with realtors. Let's face it, I'm out in the real estate business, I see realtors all the time. I make a mental note of the ones I connect with, the ones that connect with me, what I do, what I'm about. Not all realtors connect with investors. Matter of fact, a lot of real estate agents and brokers think we're scumbags, think that we're grave dancers or, or buzzards flying around people that are about to die. But we serve a definite purpose, and the people that understand that, I like to make note. So let's look at it like this when you're networking with realtors. You got all the realtors in your community and then there's 
your realtors. I like to call them on my spreadsheet, my realtors. And I have a list of realtors that I've befriended, that understand me, understand what I do. We like each other. And those are the ones I stay in touch with. Believe me, you get a hundred real estate agent broker friends and you talk to them on a regular basis, you're going to buy at least 25 houses a year from that hundred network of people. Check it out. And nobody else is better about finding deals or being able to alert you about deals before the world even knows about it because they're out in the field. Sometimes the realtors and the brokers are the very first ones to hear that that house is going to be sold or that that dilapidated vacant house is going to move within the next week for certain reasons. And you want to be the one that gets the call. So hang with the realtors. They're out in the field every day. Sometimes we got to educate these realtors as to what we're looking for because a lot of realtors will walk right past the house I want. Realtors don't usually stop and salivate over a house that has five broken windows and no front door. You have to explain to them that that's what you want. If you ever see that, please don't walk past it. Stop. Give me the address. If I buy it, I'll send you a check. Networking with realtors is a forever game. You will always and forever be trying to meet the next realtor, let them know what you do, and make friends. It never ends. So I save the best for last. I don't know why I like it the best, but I can probably tell you why. It's probably because I made a ton of money using bandit signs. They're cheap. They're inexpensive. Back in the day when I first started, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. So I was going around the neighborhoods looking for all the extinct and expired political signs after the races were finished. I was gathering up every political sign I could find. I especially loved the four by eights. I would turn them over. I would cut them up. I would write my I buy houses for cash. I put my phone number and I would put out hundreds upon hundreds of signs. And I bought hundreds upon hundreds of houses over the years using those signs. You know, when you do it the way I did it, just uh, picking up the old abandoned signs, flipping them over, wiping them off, and writing your message on the back side and put them up. They're free. You know, when you don't have money, you exchange time and expertise. I could have paid for those signs, but I didn't have any money. So I had to find another way and I had to spend time to do that. One thing about bandit signs is you got to put out a lot of them. I'm going to suggest that you use a number that captures the incoming caller's cell phone number and that you put free recorded message on that bandit sign. I use Livecom. I get all my phone numbers from Livecom. That's L-I-V-E-C-O-M-M dot com. They happen to be a sponsor of this YouTube channel because I like them so much and I like what they do. I buy my phone numbers from them. I think they're like $2 a piece. And I put a Livecom phone number either forwarded to a recording or forwarded to my cell phone depending on how I want to handle it. And that phone number will automatically capture the incoming caller's cell phone number and put it in a text distribution list. Every cell phone number has a text distribution list attached to it. And if it recognizes a cell phone caller coming in, it'll grab the number and put it in the distribution list. So I can try different signs with a different cell phone number and I can see which message is working the best. It's a way of tracking which, which signs work in the best because I can tell which signs getting the most calls. I personally like to just put a recording of who I am and what I do. And then Livecom also allows me to click on an instant call connect button, which means when anyone calls and starts listening to my recording, I get a text and the text says, someone from this phone number right here is listening to your recording for, and then it puts whatever you name that phone number. And I know exactly who's, what they're listening to. And then I can call them right now. I just give them a little bit of time to get through the recording. And then I call them. Hey, this is Mitch. I noticed you just were listening to my recording. Do you have a house for sale? Is there something I can help you with? This takes bandit signs to a whole nother level. I can also set up reminders or send out text messages to people in the future. So I can design messages in the future and do a future scheduling to say, Things like, I'm still interested in your property. Is it still for sale? Even further than that, Livecom can text merge, which means I can send out a text to 150 people and every recipient sees their first name and sees the property address that they were talking to me about. Hey, John, are you still trying to sell 123 Main Street? I'm still interested. Call me. Phone number. It's a beautiful thing. That's why I like bandit signs, but I especially like bandit signs combined with Livecom or some modern technology because it takes things to a whole nother level. The bottom line when you're trying to find houses is if you put up enough numbers, you'll find the houses. 
You need to, number one, know how to establish value. One of the most important things you'll ever learn how to do. Learn how to establish the value of that house right over there and that house right over there and learn to do it quickly and accurately. Number two, you need to learn how to negotiate. Negotiating will be one of the finest skills you'll ever learn. The better you get at it, the more money you'll make, the longer you'll be in business. Number three, last but not least, you got to learn how to write a contract. Mundane, boring, but believe me, if you don't write the contract right, you can be messing yourself up and screwing yourself out of tons of money. Get with someone that really knows how to write a contract and learn from them and become an expert at that little set of documents. In my book, My Life in a Thousand Houses, 200 plus ways to find bargain properties, I talk about a lot of ways to find distressed properties and bargain properties. There's over 200 ways, as you can imagine, and we only talked about five right now. So check out that book, My Life in a Thousand Houses, 200 plus ways to find bargain properties, and especially pay attention to the first 31 pages where I show you some critical mistakes I made early on in my branding and how it cost me years and so much goodwill you won't even imagine.